Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Ultra Turles banner. I think, uh, whenever we get these Ultra banners, I think it probably is a good idea to record a Should You Summon, just because I always get a ton of questions, you know, should you summon on this banner or that banner, and, you know, uh, is this the right timing to summon on uh, banners for characters, etc, etc, etc. Typically, Ultra characters are the best characters in the game, and it's been that way since Ultras have come out. So uh, we're going to take a look at this Ultra Turles banner, and I'm going to give my opinions on whether or not you should be summoning on this banner. Now, of course, as always, these always come down to your specific account status. Uh, you know, what kinds of teams you're running, what kinds of characters you already have access to with your account. Um, so, for example, on this Ultra Turles banner, if you are somebody who likes to use the movies team, if you're always running the movies team, if you have a competent movie set up to run this Turles on, I could actually see an argument where this might be a banner worth summoning on if you are somebody who just like mains the movies team or again, you have like a very good movie scene that you've been running for a long time. Uh, for most people, I think it's almost never worth summoning on ultra banners. I think there are very few exceptions, like for example, uh, Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta probably was one. Um, the banner formats themselves just aren't great, but obviously it's just like a lot of these characters are must-haves. I will tell you right now, I don't feel like this Turles is a must-have. That doesn't mean he's not good. I think this Turles is in contention. Again, I've only done the initial showcase on this character, so I really can't say uh, where he's going to rank right now, but I think he's contending for top three in the game, which is crazy. I mean, that's insane. Like, this this character is insane. That's no question. He's a, he's a ridiculous character. Um, but when I'm talking about whether or not you should be summoning on these banners or not, I'm mostly looking at the overall value of the banner themselves. What are the featured characters in the banners? Are you going to get a lot of value from your CC being spent on this banner? What kinds of perks exist on this banner that you can get from summoning on it, etc. So we'll start off by taking a look at the featured characters list here. Uh, obviously, Turles himself is a crazy unit. Uh, if you're summoning on this banner, your number one uh, and maybe only goal is probably going to be to pull this Turles. Uh, and if we go down, here are the four Legends Limited characters on the banner. Whenever we get an Ultra banner, uh, there are usually four Legends Limited characters on the banner, uh, you know, sort of like alongside the Ultra character. So the first one we have is PyCon, who revives into Super Gogeta. I definitely feel like this guy was really, really good back when he released almost a full year ago. Uh, he aged decently, but as we headed into the sixth anniversary, we started to see this guy sort of get just shoved to the sidelines because purple became a very dominant color. And I would even say even before the anniversary because we had like Golden Frieza drop and then we went into the anniversary and then we had Ultimate Gohan drop and then we had Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta drop. So there's a lot of strong purple characters, uh, even still with Goku existing, the yellow uh, tree of might Goku existing. Um, it's going to be tough for this PyCon to really see a ton of value. And I think by the time we see a lot of these purple characters start to leave the meta, uh, it might be too late for this guy to really still have a shine on a lot of his teams, movies, uh, Saiyans, Fusion Warrior, stuff like that. So uh, I don't really think this PyCon has a lot of value right now. Uh, Red Cooler is a character that is just waiting for a buff in the form of either unique equipment or a Zenkai Awakening. It's been kind of strange because this cooler has been on a lot of banners recently, and typically when they put a character on a lot of banners in succession like this, they are, you know, about to get some kind of buff. So I imagine this cooler is probably about to get a Zenkai or unique equipment somewhere down the line, maybe in the next month or even less than that. Could be next week for all I know, but uh, I definitely do think with the frequency of how often this guy is being put on banners, it is likely that he might get a buff soon, but uh, it's impossible for me to really consider that because we don't know, A, how good the buff's going to be, and we don't know, B, when it's going to come out. Uh, Turles also being blue probably would mean that this cooler is not going to be super great, maybe? I mean, we'll see. I can't really comment on a potential buff to this character, but as it stands right now, definitely not a, a very high-priority character. Dragon Fist, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, I would say is uh, probably the best character on here besides uh, Turles. It's between this guy and the blue Broly. Um, Blue Broly, I mean, but we could just talk about both of them together because they're both Zenkai characters. Uh, Blue Broly is a character that got his Zenkai during the 6th anniversary. I think he's a pretty good character. Uh, he's a unit that um, is able to gain a lot of steam by snowballing. He, he gets a lot of damage by using cards by the enemy switching. He's getting card draw speed and vanish restoration. Um, so he can sort of snowball from point A to point B pretty fast but he's very inconsistent when it comes to his performance as compared with other best you know, best units in the game, other top units in the game. 
Um, he's a very solid bench character, and that's the same thing with the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Uh, whenever they give LF characters Zenkais, they almost always try and make them have very, very good uh, longevity and um, have an impact, at least if not, not in battle, from the bench. Uh, and that is something that both these characters do very, very well, especially for a movie team. So if, again, if you're somebody who likes playing movies, not only could you get value out of pulling Ultra Turles in this banner, but I think you could actually also get value from pulling Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Broly, uh, if nothing more than just as really, really good, almost staple bench characters for the movies team. But Dragon Fist, I think, is probably the second best character on here. Uh, he recently got his Zenkai actually as part of this campaign that we're in right now. Uh, he has a unique equipment. I feel like he can do decently. Um, but when it, again, when it comes to him trying to compete with the best characters in the game, it's a bit of a difference there, but at least he's still a usable character. Um, now we're going to get to the 0.5% sparking characters. He's, these are just the list of sparking characters that you're going to be pulling most often on here. Uh, Magenta is power crept at this point. Yellow Tapion is power crept at this point. Green Broly is power crept at this point. Red Broly, or uh, Red Broly, Red uh, Bojack is power crept at this point. Uh, this Yellow Broly, again, during the opening portions of this campaign did get a Zenkai Awakening. This guy, like the Zenkais, is a staple, but he's a staple for powerful opponents. So again, I think if you're a movies player trying to summon on this in anticipation of getting a bunch of movies characters, maybe this guy won't fit on your optimal build on the bench just because this guy buffs a uh, powerful opponent in yellow with a Zenkai ability and he buffs powerful opponent HP with a Z ability. So not really a movies bench character, uh, but you can sort of build a core of movies using powerful opponent and then maybe he can fit on the bench there, but uh, not really a top priority character for you to really try and get here. Yellow Turles is uh, for some reason not Zenkai. I don't know why they decided to go with yellow Bardock in this celebration, but um, yeah, this guy's worthless right now until he gets a Zenkai at some point. Uh, now, here is an interesting character, Blue Slug. He does have a Zenkai. He's actually a really good bench for regen, which doesn't really play into the rest of the banner here. But this guy did get a unique equipment that actually is pretty interesting. I don't think this character is competitive, really, but it's it's a pretty good one of the, I would say it's one of the better unique equipments for Zenkai characters we've ever seen. But uh again, this character's not really gonna fit amongst the other movies characters you would use if you're gonna be pulling on this banner. And uh I think for most players, it is not worth spending resources to try and get the roles that you would need on unique equipment for Zenkai characters because they can only be used on one specific character. You're better off as somebody either as a free-to-play player or someone who's a very light spending player. You're better off spending your resources rolling equipment that you think are gonna be usable on a wide variety of characters instead of just pinpointing on the one equipment that's gonna be used on one specific character. Don't think it's worth spending the resources on that. Uh, this Goku is completely dead. This Goku is super dead. It doesn't even have a Zenkai Awakening. Uh, and then the final 0.5% sparking character is Purple Turles. Purple Turles also did get a unique equipment in the celebration. Uh, I don't think this Purple Turles' unique equipment is as good as the Blue Slug equipment. Um, but I, at, again, I think it at least makes him usable. Uh, it's kind of a roulette style equipment where it's really going to base this character off of how many green cards you're drawing. And that's kind of been the, the, the soul of the character ever since he first dropped. It's how many green cards can you use with him? Can you spam them? And if you don't, if you're not going to draw greens, I mean, I have, I have multiple videos on my channel trying to showcase this guy off. And if you just don't draw green cards, he's just not going to look good and it's just a gamble with him so i'm not really going to consider this guy as like a great option on this banner so looking at the overall lineup of all the characters on here definitely not the greatest um, and for that reason especially in combination with the banner format of ultra banners not being good there's no way i could recommend anybody to summon on this unless you are just like only focused on movie characters if you're somebody who's basically based your entire account around movies which honestly isn't a bad idea because of how often movies gets buffed. Um, there's so many movies characters that exist that it's just really hard to avoid buffing movies. Uh, I would say it's not worth spending on this banner. Again, the, the format of Ultra Banners is just straight up inferior to LF Step Up Banners. I would say we are now less than two months. Believe it or not, we are less than two months from Legends Fest. I think starting from right now until... Legends Fest begins in the third week-ish of November, it's a good time to start saving up CC for that. 
Um, especially with Daima coming out next month, we don't really know when to expect some Daima stuff. There could be some hype new forms for characters coming out in this game. I don't know if they're going to be saving Daima for Legends Fest or just dropping stuff in two weeks for Daima. It's possible. I'm going to do a separate video talking about Daima stuff uh, later this week, but um, there's a lot of potentially very exciting and hype stuff coming out soon. So I would say unless you are just a full blown movies main, it is certainly not worth summoning on this. Uh, again, uh, it's not really a new thing for Ultra Banners. You just compare this. There's no summon coins on Ultra Banners, which means you can't get the tickets to summon. You can't get Z power. There's no pity system. Uh, it's just overall a worse format than uh, than LF Step Up Banners. Remember, LF Step, Up, LF Step Up Banners also have two times sparking rates and double Z power, which Ultra Banners do not have. So. Uh, that is going to be this video. I just wanted to make this quickly, and I think I'm probably going to continue doing these videos moving forward for all Ultra Banners because I get a lot of questions on should you summon on these, but, uh, TLDR of this video, if you are a dedicated movies main, might be worth considering summoning on this. Everyone else, hard skip. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below if you decided to summon on the banner anyway and what you pulled. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one.